sine 7 over 25. Now this is an important part of finishing up the question. If nothing else, it's going to tell you, you know, you're wrong, if you are wrong. So I've got an inverse sine. I'm just checking that alpha and beta add together to this. Now I, I can go with the original information that was given, or so which I should do in tech theory. So plus the inverse cos. I could have also gone with inverse sine here with using different different values now. But this is inverse cos inverse uh, cos of five over thirteen. A little bit surprised because there doesn't seem to be any really. Ooh, and I didn't get. So that makes me wonder: Did I do my mental maths right? A twelve twelve is one hundred and forty-four, but that's double twelve, so this should be definitely two eighty-eight. And seven fives. Um, seven over twenty-five. Cos of this is five over thirteen, plus the cos. So oh, hold on. The cos of alpha is twenty-four over twenty-five. And the sine of beta is 12 over 13. Okay, let's be careful here. 12 25s is 400. 300. And 1 12. 300. And 125 is 25. So that's 325. 288. And 35. Ah, look at that. Uh, I went too high here. Uh, I'm 280. I need 12. Need 12 to come off that, and I'm left with 23. Uh, 12 to come off that. I'm totally wrong, anyway. And you can just see. Well, really, you should have used your calculator. Who's going to tell the difference? I mean, that it was it, it wasn't breaking the spirit. Breaking the spirit was just using the calculator in trig form, not for mental maths. And I keep telling you, use your calculator and don't make a fool of yourself, like I've just done. Um, okay, look. Um, and indeed, there was some worrying things about this, in that the, the, the triangles didn't have any relationship to each other. So the fact that it would come out to be perfectly one just did not add up, so to speak. Um, 288 plus 35. And of course, remember, I'm doing this during, before signing off and saying I'm happy with the result. So we get, now we know sign has to always be less than one. And this is just slightly, slightly less than one. I mean, now I'm again worried because I didn't, so you'd have to inverse sign that and you could check the individual angles, but I'm kind of out in time for one video, you're going to stop watching it if I, if I go on much longer. So we leave it at that and say we've that done. We just see what alpha and beta is just, and then we'll check that with our, with our further work. Um, or I should have written it down here, come on. Shift sign seven over twenty-five plus it's easier to just go sh keep going shift sign. I think a lot of us might prefer doing sign as a ratio than cos. And it's easier to read twelve over thirteen. Okay, that's what the angles add up to, 83.64. But I'm not convinced that when I inverse sign this, because they're so close to each other. Twenty-four over twenty-five. Sine of beta twelve over thirteen. 12, 12, 144, 288, 7, 5, 35. What you're seeing here is you're just seeing the various parts of the course. Oh, look at that, big surprise. So close to one. And at the same time, 
we're coming all the way out to 83.64 so that's really surprising but it's become so non-linear towards the end uh, so there's no surprise I'm just a bit surprised that a number that's so close to 1 has an inverse sign that's so f far away from 90 degrees that's all okay so we're continuing on using this for tan of alpha plus beta. So we need a formula. We need a formula for the tan of a sum. So it's the sum of two individual tans over one minus the product of the tans. You might drift from alpha and beta into A and B. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, there you're just changing from Greek alphabet to English alphabet. You might find it easier. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we're going to our, gra our, our reference triangles. The uh, tan of alpha is 7 over 24. Plus tan of beta is 12 over 5. Over 1 minus, and once you've got to here, you can just start reusing these um, computations that are already done for us. That should have been a 24. And 12 over 5. That goes into that twice, that's 7 over 10. And at that stage, hey, look, I think you're having to hope you just, you're just best off, just from a practical point of view, it's faster to, to do these on a calculator. So 7 over 24, well, what's 7 over 24? I haven't got a clue. But I'm putting a new fraction of bar up there and saying 7 over 24. I'm moving forwards and adding. Now, I will just say that that's 2.4. It's just quicker to put it in like that. I'm going 1 minus 2.4 times 7 over 24 in a bracket. So this is definitely heavy on computation. And that is really pretty much what you get for the tan. So the tan of alpha plus beta is equal to 323 over 36. Now you could have constructed that from the previous, but you can also just inverse tan that now. Shift inverse tan that answer to again come up with 83.64 and you know you're right. It's always nice to know you're right. Okay, I can see how long this homework is and I'll certainly be changing my mind regarding how much of it you need to do in one evening, but um, we're down as far as here and the questions in your book and we're going on for a few proofs. So proofs are fun. We love proofs. So we'll go on and we'll prove the sine of 90 degrees plus A. And we're going to end up, we have a left hand side and we have a right hand side. Okay, and you start on one place and you keep going until you end up on the other place. So we'll probably start on the left. It's probably the best place to start because this, this, this is the sine of a compound angle. So this is the sine so I'll just start on this and start processing it using the compound compound angle formula for sine of a sum. So sine of a sum is a sum, and it's a sine cos cos sine pattern with the uh, air dropping in the angles just in the order they were in. Okay, now some of this 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 tidies up dramas drastically, and um, that's one. So from an identity point of view, it disappears. That's zero, so it takes out the entire term. And we're left with cos of A. Okay, now, the important thing is not the proof. The important thing is to put that in your tool bag to go with it. Now, we did complementary angles earlier. We did, hey, the cos of 90 minus A is definitely equal to the sine of A. That's easy, and you, you have that from a right angle triangle, from trigonometry, from right angle triangle trigonometry, and luckily it stays true in general. Okay? Because if this is angle A, then this is 90 minus A, and the cos of a complementary angle is equal to the sine of the angle. It's really easy. And that's where the word cosine comes from. The word cosine comes from the sine of the complementary angle. Okay? So, what we need to do. And we also had that the sine of 90 minus A was equal to cos of A. 
So we have a big surprise here when we're getting the sine of 90 degrees plus A is also equal to the cos of A. And we might try to understand that from a drawing point of view. The sine of 90 take away A or plus A. You can see that sine, sine is even around 90 degrees. So as well as going with the complementary result from junior cert, we can also head this way with no change whatsoever because this sign equals this sign which is the same as the cos is this just looks like a cos curve going that way and that way okay so that's fantastic so we can go one better we can say the sine of 90 degrees plus or minus a is equal to the cos of a okay that's to do with uh, this is to do with what you might say well what's this all about well it's about symmetry and symmetry comes from transformations in, in particular from reflections. Okay. So the next um, the next uh, proof you want is to show that the cos of ninety degrees plus theta is equal to minus the sine of theta. So first let's let's take sine, let's take cos to here. This is its ninety degree mark. Okay. So when you're adding theta you're going this way. And what they're saying is you're going down there. You're, it has a very similar pattern to what sine is doing, except sine is going upwards. Okay? So basically cosine, which is an even function, becomes an odd function around 90 degrees. And not just that, we also know that the cos of 90 degrees minus theta, this size, this is exactly matching with sine going this way. So while that's equal to sine, theta, the cos of 90 degrees plus theta is equal to minus 90. Now we have a lovely way of writing that in maths. Okay, we have a lovely way of, of scribbling this oddness in maths, and that is um, and that is that what did I just do? I did this one. So that is that the cos of 90 degrees plus or minus theta is equal to minus or plus the sine of theta whereby this is getting if this is a minus this is a plus which is our complementary angle and if this is a plus this is a minus okay so we'll certainly try and carry this forward and remember it in the future so the cos of 90 degrees plus theta is equal to minus the sine of theta. Super. Now the rest of these, I don't think you're going to be needing them like, um, I don't think you're going to be needing them every day of the week. Um, putting it mildly, but still um, we're going to practice proving formulas here. So um, we're go asked to get an identity for the sine, well, we're asked actually, we're given both sides, which is always helpful. Okay, so you're expected to come up with this result. Okay, now um, this is a compound angle, so we should be able to apply the um, compound angle identity for sine of a sum. So that would mean we can kick off with the sine a cos 45 degrees, plus gives us a plus cos a sine 45 degrees. Okay, now the cos of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. Ah, this is simple. Okay, and so is that. So basically, you end up with the sine of A over root 2 plus the cos of A over root 2. Because the cos of 45 and the sine of 45 are both 1 over root 2. And that's that's tidies up by taking out the 1 over root 2 and you ended up with the sine of A plus the cos of A. Lovely questions, done and dusted. Um, no, I did something very bad there. I didn't kind of look back and try to appreciate. That what really it's telling us is what's tr transformation of sine when you add 45 degrees to the argument? So, because what would be really nice if we had maybe 
the inkling of considering trying to actually put this in our toolbox. Now that's very ambitious, but nevertheless it's no harm in thinking about it. So to be ambitious is to consider trying to remember it. Doesn't matter if you forget it, but give it a go. Don't just throw it away straight away. So basically when I see 45 degrees, sine of 45 degrees, I think of 1 over root 2. Okay? So I can remember that. that that's, that's jolting my memory. And when I see the sine of A and I just think, well, I've used him already, I might write the sine of A. And then I just remembered it's the sine plus the cos. So this is an identity which indeed, you know, we will never be expected to pull that out of thin air in the middle of a Leaving Cert maths exam. Uh, but still, it just shows up for a proof again by knowing it and knowing it. If you just totally threw this away immediately, you didn't even give it the slightest bit of attention, then what will happen is you'll end up doing it again and you won't even know you've done it before. Um, okay, so a similar idea here. Now, pi over 4, we're in trigonometry and leaving certain maths, so we can throw that away straight away uh, once we know, you see, that's 180 degrees over 4. Well, that's 45 degrees. Okay, so we just convert it into degrees and work from degrees because I know most of us will find radians a bit intimidating and there's no reason for you to adopt them unless you're doing calculus. I uh, think that's pretty much true. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about what's the tan of x plus 45 degrees. Well, that is clearly the tan of a sum. So if we're talking about the tan of a sum, we should be thinking of using a tan of a sum identity which is a tan plus a tan over 1 minus a tan tan. Okay, where we get to fill in the uh, angles in the order that they appear. So tan of 45 degrees is 1. You see, this is where you're expected to know that, okay? So you end up with tan of x plus 1 